Okay, now we're ready to draw our cylinder. It's the last of the five forms. Um, I want to just remind you, you should do them in sequence because knowing how to do this helps you to do this. Knowing how to do this helps you to do this, this, and this. This helps you to do this. This helps you to do this. They all help you to do each other, right? So make sure you work from left to right, top to bottom as you develop your process, okay? So we've done four forms and one shape. Remember, this is a flat shape. You, if you didn't label it, make sure you do label it and just leave the box that it came in, okay? Ha <laughs> the little uh, pun. We'll eventually erase that box. Don't worry about it for now. We'll do that before we start the shading with tone. Okay? So we're ready to do a cone. I'm sorry, a cylinder. So just like a cone, a cylinder is circular in format at the bottom, but it goes straight up and down at the sides. It doesn't come to an apex at the top. It doesn't have a triangle. It has what we call a rectangle or another box similar to this that makes it side edges. Now we could use a linear perspective to help us determine the, t the distance from here to here, here to here, um, but we're just going to use the measurements that are on the, the direction sheet again. Um, if you remember for number four, the cone, I had you change the distance from the t apex to the bottom closest to five inches instead of four inches. Four inches just made it kind of a funny square, uh, smashed down looking cone, and then there was all this empty space underneath it. Didn't make any sense, and um, I guess when I made my direction sheet, I didn't think about that, all right? Um, let's go on to the directions for the cylinder. So we're gonna do a central axis on it too. Uh, so remember, a central axis would go from right in the middle from the bottom through the form to the top so that it could rotate like this, right? So it'd be right in the middle of the form, not on the outer edge. So we're gonna draw that first, and then we'll draw the outer edges, and then we'll put an ellipse at the top and an ellipse at the bottom, because that's what a cone, I'm sorry, a cylinder does. So if you follow the directions with me, once again, we're gonna make it five inches tall instead of four. So I'm going to, about in the middle, this, this edge where the metal of my ruler is, is about in the middle from here to there as it is from here to there. And it needs to be a 90 degree angle, a 90 degree angle to the, to the fold and to the bottom and the top of the paper, okay? So, uh, or you could measure it over if you wanted to, to make sure. Um, so I'm going to draw mine and as the directions say, you're gonna start half an inch down with your line. So here's half an inch, the zero's at the fold, half an inch starts here, and once again, five inches, not four, but five. And I picked up the wrong pencil again, so I'll pick up. I want you to use the HB, but I'm using a, a and we're gonna go to five and a half inches, okay? So it's a five inch long line, we started at half, so we're going down to five and a half, all right? Use an HB pencil, I'm using the, the uh, fi 3B, just so you can see it better on the video. I'm gonna zoom in so you can follow along a little bit more easily too. All right, so the next steps on this are we're going to draw in the rectangles like we did for the ellipse here, a rectangle at the top for an ellipse and a rectangle at the bottom. Like we did here, we're gonna make it um, two inches uh, wide instead of four inches wide. I think that's what the directions say. So it's a little narrower than that is. So we're gonna put it at one inch in the middle. I'm just reading, yeah, two inches wide, reading my direction sheet. So one inch to the left and one inch to the right makes it two inches wide. And remember, I'm not necessarily putting my ruler anywhere. Um, we're gonna draw in the side edges first anyway. So I'm gonna do three marks all the way up. And up at the top, one inch, one inch. And I'm gonna go ahead and do another set of marks. I like to do multiple marks because it helps me to make sure that it's straight. If they don't all match up, then I know something's not quite right. And those are pretty good, right? So now, like the directions say, we're going to make a rectangle from top to bottom. And 
I'm sorry, I'm going to put my ruler at the fold at zero again, just like I did for the center line here. So it just starts at the same place. Line them up again. There we go. And so a little low. There we are. Here's my half inch mark right there. So it starts there and it goes down to five and a half inches right there. I'm going to measure this one because it looks a little bit off to me. Nope, it's perfect. And then we'll do this one too. Okay, so we're, we're making the outer edges of our cylinder and at the same time we're making the boxes for the ellipses. Starting at half an inch here, going down along my marks to half an inch here. Okay, and then just put in the top. Now I made measurement marks here and here to stop my lines because my tick marks went a little bit beyond my measurement uh, for these at this, this direction. And that fully encloses that line there. Okay, same thing on this one. Line everything up. All right, so now we've got a rectangle that's bisected with its central axis. Now we need to make a line here and a line here for the ellipses boxes. It needs two, two, to make a uh, cylinder, all right? We're gonna make the top one shorter than the bottom one, and I'll explain why. When we uh, look at a, a cylinder like a Coke can or something like that, when you look at it and it's below your eye level, the distance from bring it down a little bit lower. The distance from the back to the front of that ellipse, the distance here is less because it's close to your eye level than the bottom of it, okay? I wish I could get this all in screen, maybe if I was a taller person, okay? So the distance from here to the back edge that you can't really see is gonna be more because it's lower from our eye level. That helps us, that's very much related to what we did here, right? the back edges are higher than the bottom edge because of the distance. So we need to know that the lower it is from our eye level, the, the bigger the, the, the distance from the uh, front to the back of the ellipse at the bottom, smaller at the top, closer to eye level. Okay. A little bit more. Come on, baby. It doesn't want to zoom in anymore. That's it. Okay, so <clears throat> the direction sheet tells you to measure down half an inch from this one to that one. So my, oops, that's not the inches. Yes, it was. I confused myself. So here's the zero at the top. Here's the half inch right there. Now I'm going to divide that in half again. Half of the distance from here to there is this long line right there. I'm doing it at the same time so that I've got my all my measurements done. This is like that point there. This is like that. This is like that. Okay, we do it at the right hand side too. Half an inch divided in, in half is a fourth of an inch. All right. Now at the half inch lines, connect them. That makes this edge. But we don't connect these because they are just the, the measurement from here to here, from here to here. Now for the bottom one, let's make it, instead of half an inch, let's make it easy on ourselves and just make it a full inch, right? Now, that's going to be a little exaggerated, but I think it's better to, to do an exaggeration than to have to do a lot of math. You know, what, what would be the accurate one? If we were drawing something that we were actually looking at and trying to mimic it, we would use what's called the sighting method or comparative measurement to get this measurement in relationship to that one. So here's one inch at the bottom of the, that. I'm gonna put my zero is gonna be the top mark and half of the distance down, half an inch, is my tick mark for making my curvature. Do the same thing at this side. The inch mark is at the bottom line right there. 
my zero is the top of the ellipse. The ellipse is box. And a half, a, half of the distance is half an inch. All right. And then let's go ahead and lightly draw in the back edge because you're going to erase all of that like we did on the cone. We can't see through it. But on the top face, we are going to see the entire ellipse like we do that one because it's like this. We see this edge and this edge. We don't see this back edge, though, because it's solid. It's opaque. Okay. So now, following the process that you did for this and for this, you're going to go from edge to edge, creating your ellipse. By the way, did you know the plural of ellipse is ellipses? Okay. All right, so you're going to curve right to the edge. It's a nice gradual change. You might want to make sure your pencil is nice and sharp. Remember, create, uh, create your ghost lines, create your muscle memory. Don't let it get flattened out. Don't let it turn into a pointy shape. Okay. So I'm going to let you finish off your, your cylinder on your own. Um, I do want to just mention, I expect to see you, you complete these, this ellipse, but then remember you're going to erase from here down to here and you're going to get rid of the back edge and the unseen part of the ellipse here. You're going to get rid of the rectangle here and here and the corners and this, this line here. Okay, So you, you want to do the erasing that helps it to look as much like this as you can get it to look there. Okay, So I'm going to let you work on it and we'll talk about it in class. All right, Go to it.